In the last video, I've talked about how we can obtain the velocity time graph from the flux time graph by taking the gradients of the flux time graph. How the velocity, uh, how, uh, did I say velocity again? I mean, how we can obtain the voltage from the flux time graph uh, by taking its gradients. Right. And I've also mentioned that we can determine the maximum voltage uh, sim uh, simply by multiplying the angular velocity by the maximum flux, B times A. Now, let me add in uh, one more detail to this. The coil, as we, as we understand, the coil can have more than one term. So, for example, instead of just, just a single loop, suppose that this, this coil of wire sort of goes round and around and around and around many times. Okay, so let's say there are n turns altogether. n might be 2, 10, 100. So if there are n turns here, then for the flux, um, if I want to relate the flux to the voltage, okay, we, we, could, we would still think of the flux as um, the magnetic flux density times the area. But to find the voltage, to find the voltage, we must multiply the flux by the number of turns to give the flux linkage. Okay. So this means that the maximum voltage will also be multiplied by n. So the more turns I have, the bigger the voltage. So let me try an exercise. Let me try an exercise. I'll clear of the simple harmonic motion first. Now suppose that um, you know, in, in, in some country like uh, the UK or Singapore, the mains electric supply, the mains electricity has a voltage of about 240 volts. About 240 volts. And, and the mains electricity supply is AC. AC stands for alternating current. Just means that the voltage goes up and down like a sine curve, just like this. Okay. In fact, the, the mains electricity supply is produced by a generator that basically consists of rotating coils. Um, there might be other methods, but this is one of the one of the important ways to do it. Okay. And the in the mains electricity supply, we, we would normally receive an alternating voltage, meaning that the voltage keeps changing direction, and it would keep changing direction at a frequency of about at a frequency of about 50 hertz. It might vary from place to place, perhaps, but let's say it's, let's say I take it to be 50 hertz for this example. Okay, now, um, and suppose that the, um, I, I want to think about a coil and a magnetic field that can give me this, this uh, AC, this mains power supply. So let's imagine that I have an a so-called AC generator. 
uh, with a flux density with a flux, magnetic flux density of one tesla okay and suppose that there is a, a coil there, there is this this loop with many turns and suppose that the size is about um, roughly say say it's roughly a square with a side of about 30 centimeters about 30 centimeters right so Right, let me just take as an example. Um, right, let me just take it as 10 cm, just a small coil. Just 10 cm. Now, what I like to do is I would like to determine the number of turns I would need in order to to produce this voltage given that the coil is rotating at this frequency suppose that the coil rotates 50 times a second okay so let's try that now i would like um, i would like this to be my maximum voltage my my v naught so this this is v naught Okay, and the question is to find n. Right, I, I will find the number of turns. Find the number of turns that would give me this, given that the frequency is 50 hertz. And I can do it by using this formula. See, v naught is equal to n, the number of turns, times the angular frequency, times v and a. Now the angular frequency is related to the to the frequency by let's see by omega is equal to two pi f. So using this relation between the voltage um, between the voltage and and all these other things. I can try and solve for n. So if I take this formula and make n the subject, I would move this to the other side. So that gives me v naught Okay, that gives me v naught over Omega times B times A. So let's now put in the numbers. So let's see, B naught. Okay, let's try that. B naught is 240 volts. Omega is 2 pi F f is 50 okay f is 50 now b i've taken b to be one tesla and a a is the area of the square loop with, with a side of 10 centimeters so 10 centimeters is 0.1 meter so it's a 0.1 squared area that, that would be 0 0.01 meter squared so that's it really that's that's all we need to to calculate this now um okay now I just need a rough answer. I just need a rough answer. So what I'm going to do is this. 
I'm going to take pi to be roughly equal to 3. Okay, so 2 times 50 is 100. That will cancel with, that will multiply by 0 0.01 to give 1. Okay, so I can imagine that um, this will multiply to give 1. I can cancel them. That's just 1. And if I take pi to be roughly equal to 3, then 240 divided by 3 is 80. So the answer is approximately 80. You can use a calculator to calculate this more accurately. But um, I would just use this approximate value uh, just, to, just to show this example. So what this means is that if I use um, a coil with 80 turns and I, I put this in, in this strong magnetic field and I, I turn this round and round um, 50 times a second then I would actually produce a voltage that is almost the same as um, the mains power supply that, that we might get in a house in, in uh, Britain or in Singapore, for example. Now let me just finish off by mentioning uh, uh, one thing about, about this 240 volts. Now if, if the mains power supply is given as 240 volts, um, that would often refer to the something called the RMS. The RMS, which stands for root mean square value. Now this is a kind of average that I'll talk about in a later video. And it would 240 volts may not actually refer to to the peak voltage. But for this example, I'm just going to take that as the peak voltage. And I'll talk about more about this root mean square idea in a later video.